Yo, conscience, it's time. Time for what? It's time to cover the devil. Wait, 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 wait. You don't mean that devil, do you? Bruh, you know who I'm talking about. Aw, shit. Yo, start that shit, son. Subject 64432B. Psycho evaluation treatment. Day 13. Resume. What is your name? No. No. Not you. Not today. Go away. Is it bad that I kind of like that game? What up, class? Welcome to another episode of Honest Gaming History. Today's lecture will be on... Long ago, the human realm and the demon realm were two separate entities. Mundus, the leader of the demon army, sought to attack the human realm. Because demons are assholes. Within Mundus' army was an extremely powerful demon warrior known as Sparta. Sparta saw what Mundus was doing and was like, Bruh, cut the shit! Then he single-handedly defeated Mundus and the demon army before they could overpower the human realm. And for safe measure, he sealed a demonic tower known as a Temini Gru, which in turn sealed the demon world and his demonic powers. Thousands of years later, Sparta remained as the protector of the human realm and ended up banging some chick named Eva. How do you even make love to a demon? That's just gross. I mean, it is a game, so... I mean, I guess, but it doesn't make it any less gross. They then have two sons, Virgil and Dante. But Mundus wasn't having that, so he sent some demons to go murder Eva. Now Dante and Virgil are homeless orphans. Before this happened, however, Sparta gave each of his sons half of a very important amulet. Then he just kind of disappeared and died. Fast forward a bunch of years later, and Dante is now a proud owner of an unnamed shop where he does odd jobs that usually have to do with killing demons. He believes that demons killed his whole family, so the demon killing thing is his way of getting some sweet revenge. In the middle of a mission, Dante runs into Virgil, his brother who he thought was dead. Virgil talks to Dante about their father and his past. He then explains that the amulets that they have are halves of one very powerful hull. Once the amulets are combined, it will unlock Sparta's ultimate weapon, the Force Edge. Which was sealed away in the Temini group, along with Sparta's powers. Virgil wants Dante's half of the amulet so he can unlock their father's ultimate weapon, and in turn unseal the demon world in the process. Dante is like, nah bruh. Then they fight like all anime-inspired brothers should. The battle ends in a draw, and Virgil departs with Arkham, a demon that he is working with. Fast forward a little more, we get to the beginning of Devil May Cry 3, where Dante is chilling in his shop, still unnamed. I haven't even picked a name for this joint, and I'm already getting calls. Arkham busts into his shop all impolite and shit, and is like, Yo, your brother Virgil said you're pussy, and you ain't about this demon life. Almost immediately after this insult, a tower appears near Dante's shop. The tower is a Temini Gru, and Virgil is waiting at the top for Dante. Well, Dante ain't no pussy, so he runs up to the tower to confront his brother. On the way, he runs into a girl named Mary, who is also planning on entering the tower. Why? Well, the demon Arkham is responsible for killing Mary's mother, so she's trying to go after him so she can get some sweet revenge. But she later finds out that Arkham is actually her father, who turned into a demon. Well, that makes shit complicated. After a bunch of demon killing, Dante makes his way to the top of the tower. Dante is like, hey, I ain't no pussy, and I also can't have you unlocking the demon world and shit, so yeah, fight me, bitch. The brothers fight, and Virgil manages to win. He ends up killing Dante and snatches Dante's half of the amulet. But this near-death experience actually activates Dante's demonic powers. So with the power of the nine-tailed fox, he- Nope. Uh-uh. I felt that joke coming from a mile away, and in any other situation, it would have been funny. But you don't bring up Naruto when we're talking about my boy Dante. All right, now back to the video. Dante awakens and rushes back to Virgil as quickly as he can. 
While Dante was taking his sweet time getting to his brother, Virgil and Arkham were making their way to the control room of the Temi Negru. They prepare to start the ritual needed to activate the tower, but Arkham starts talking that shit. Arkham is like, bruh, not only is your brother a pussy, but you're a pussy too. You guys ain't even real demons. Y'all some human ass bitches. Virgil then proceeds to murder Arkham for talking that shit. I mean, talk shit, get hit. What else can I say? So Virgil continues to the control room to activate the Temini Gru using his blood and the amulet, but he alone could not activate it. Then Dante shows up just in the nick of time. Virgil is like, hey, we share the same blood, so I'll just use yours to help complete the ritual. Dante is like, nah fam. Then the two fight again, but this time they are equally matched. While this is going on, Mary tries to use this as her chance to kill Virgil because she believes that Virgil corrupted her father and turned him into a demon. Stupid bitch. But then, a demon known as Jester appears. So Jester is some clown looking demon that revealed himself to Dante earlier. It turns out that this Joker reject is actually Arkham. Arkham was actually manipulating all of them. He tricked Virgil and Dante into coming here so that he would have access to Sparta's blood. And he got Mary to come here so he would have access to the final key needed to unlock the Temini Gru, the blood of the innocent. This is why I don't fuck with clowns. They're always trying to fuck you over. With all the pieces in place, Arkham activates the Temini Gru, enters the demon world, and claims Sparta's power for himself. Dante is about to go after him, but is stopped by Mary because she doesn't trust him. Dante is like, look bitch, I'm trying to save the world. Let me do my fucking job. Mary lets him go and gives him her rocket launcher. I mean, it's not like he needs it. The dude's a friggin' demon. Dante enters the demon world to fight Arkham, but finds Virgil. The two put their differences aside and join forces in the most epic video game team up ever to defeat Arkham. Jackpot. After he is defeated, Arkham is sent back to the human world so Mary can finish him off. Back in the demon world, Dante and Virgil start fighting over Sparta's true power. Dante manages to win, then Virgil's salty ass decides to stay in the demon world. Dante returns to the human world but is a little emotional because he kinda just left his brother for dead. Then Mary is like, devils may cry. Then they become friends and Dante names his shop Devil May Cry. That's cute. Now, on to Devil May Cry 1 where we find Dante doing what he normally does. Chilling in the shop doing a whole lot of nothing. Then suddenly, some blonde bitch named Trish busts into Dante's shop. Dante, this is the second time this happened to you. Lock your friggin' doors. She fights Dante, and Dante brushes her off like it's nothing. Trish, feeling a little moist from Dante's strength, says, so you know that dude Mundus? The dude that killed your mom? Yeah, he's trying to come back to the human world. Dante is like, Welp, can't have that. Then the two go to Millet Island to stop Mundus. Once they get to the island, Trish just up and leaves Dante, and Dante goes on to find Mundus. On his journey, he does his normal demon slaying thing, but runs into a peculiar demon known as Melo Angelo, who is being controlled by Mundus. After fighting him twice, Dante finds out that Nello Angelo is actually his dear brother Virgil. So let's rewind a bit. Apparently when Virgil decides to stay in the demon world, he ran into Mundus, and being his normal cocky self, he decided to fight the demon by himself. Now we have no idea how this fight turned out, but after seeing how Virgil became a slave to Mundus, we can assume that he got his ass whooped. But like I said before, we have absolutely no idea because the continuity between Devil May Cry 3 and Devil May Cry 1 is not 100%. Anyways, Dante defeats Virgil during their second encounter and snatches his half of the amulet. With both halves of the amulet now in Dante's grasp, he uses their combined power to earn Sparta's famous sword. Now Dante's feeling all cool because he has his daddy's power and shit. But then, the blonde bitch Trish shows up and betrays Dante, claiming that she's a demon who was working for Mundus this whole time. You two-timing asshole. Then Dante saves her from a bunch of falling rocks, because Dante still wanted some of that puh. And she looks super similar to Dante's mom. Weird. Trish goes back to Mundus, but then Mundus betrays her and captures her. Niggas just get him betrayed left and right. Mundus reveals that he created Trish as a lure to kill Dante, then proceeds to attack him. Trish then jumps in the way of the attack and sacrifices herself to save Dante. Enraged by Mundus for killing his only chance of getting some box, Dante unleashes his true demon powers and fights Mundus. Dante manages to defeat the great demon, then heads back to Trish's corpse. I 
I should have been the one to fill your dark soul with light! Weakened from the epic showdown, he then idiotically leaves both his amulet and Sparta's sword with her dead body. Then Mundus returns and corners Dante. Dante is still weak from the last fight, so he's pretty much helpless. But then, the blonde bitch comes back to save Dante. Trish lends Dante her powers, and he finally puts an end to Mundus. Then Trish goes up to Dante crying like, I'm sorry for being such a bitch, Dante. Then Dante is like, it's okay to cry, bitch. It means you're becoming a human, because devils never cry. And then they team up, rename Dante shop to Devils Never Cry, and start hunting demons together. <sighs> Dante, I thought we already established that devils may cry. Now you want to switch it up to Devils Never Cry? Make up your fucking mind. Bro! You gotta stop cursing, man. You know YouTube is trying to keep this shit kid friendly. But you just cursed too. Yeah, but I was making a fucking point. Nigga. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't say nigga, nigga. But you just fucking said it. Fuck it. We're not good at this. We're just going to keep on censoring it. Anyways, on to Devil May Cry 4, the only Devil May Cry game where Dante is not the main character. Instead, the game is focused around this nigga. So we'll just give you the parts that are important to Dante's story. We begin with Mary entering Dante's shop with some peculiar news. She goes up to Dante and Trish and is like, Hey man, did you know that there's a religious congregation called the Order of the Sword that's out here worshipping your father? Dante's like, dope. Mary's like, no, not dope. They're out here collecting demons and demonic weapons and shit. Dante is like, welp, can't have that. Then he does what any sane demon hunter does. He runs up into the church belonging to the Order of the Sword and kills the leader. Nero, a holy knight from the Order of the Sword who is also part demon, witnesses this and immediately attacks Dante thinking that he's a bad guy. Dante kind of just shrugs him off, hints that they are related somehow, then goes off about his business. Nero was then instructed by the Order of the Sword to go after Dante. Long story short, it turns out that the Order of the Sword is collecting demon-based items to power an artificial demon known as the Savior. Nero finds this out and is like, Oh, so Dante is the good guy. I'm just stupid. So Nero and Dante end up teaming up to put an end to the Order of the Sword and their demonic plan. After they save the world, Nero thanks Dante for his help. At this point, Nero has Yamato, Virgil's old sword. Dante lets him keep it as a gift, then goes about his business. Now I'm sure you guys want to learn a little bit more about Nero, but like I said before, this is Dante's story. So if you want us to cover Nero later on, just let us know in the comments down below. Alright, so on to Devil May Cry 2, the last in the storyline and probably the worst title in the series. We begin with a woman named Lucia confronting Dante with the request. She needs his help to defeat Arius. A businessman with demonic powers that is trying to take over the world by summoning a great demon known as Argusax. Dante playfully flips a coin to make the decision because it's not like saving the world for a fourth time is a big deal. The coin falls on heads and he accepts the task. Dante does what he normally does and takes out the bad guy. But they were too late. A portal to the demon world opens and Dante and Lucia know that one of them has to close it from the inside before Argusax emerges. Instead of handling this like civilized adults, Dante flips another coin. Cause fuck this game and fuck these coins. Dante ends up getting heads again, then jumps into the demon world to defeat Argusax. After he wins, he tries to go back to the human world, but the portal is closed. Realizing that he is now stuck in the demon world until further notice, he grabs his motorcycle and rides deeper into it. In the human world, Lucia is all depressed because it's kind of her fault why Dante was put into this predicament. Then, she picks up his coin to find out that both sides were heads. If that's the case, he should have just said yes to everything from jump. Some time passes, and it looks like Lucia has taken over the business for Dante. While she's chilling in Dante's shop, she hears a motorcycle go by and wonders who it could be. Was it Dante, or was it just some random nigga on a motorcycle? The world will never know. And that is the end of Dante's story. Well, the original Dante for that matter. We were contemplating whether or not we should do the new Dante story next so you guys can see the difference. It's actually pretty interesting. If you want us to do that, let us know in the comment section below. But other than that, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. If we can get over 200 likes within the first 24 hours, then we will immediately start working on the next episode of Honest Gaming History. If you have not already, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification down below so that you stay updated with everything that we do. Thank you to all my little patrons who support the channel with their monthly donations. If you are not already a patron, go down to the link below and find out how you can support the channel and get some dope rewards at the same time. With all that being said, be easy, stay lit, 
and take care.